Welcome back to part 12 of our series where we are building a trading robot for the TDM error trade API using the Python programming language. All right, so last video, we started writing the script that will actually be running all these different objects we've created so far. And so we've seen that, you know, most of these main objects are gonna be interacting with our main robot object in some fashion. And so one we've discussed heavily right now so far has been the portfolio object. The portfolio object is going to be used to store all of your different items that are in your portfolio. So with that being said, let's start going through of creating a portfolio, adding positions to a portfolio using the add positions method. So for multiple positions and the add position for a single position. And then we're gonna see how to grab those positions, print them out. And then we're also gonna talk about how that translates into getting quotes. So first things first, let's create a new portfolio. So we're gonna say trading robot port portfolio equals, we're gonna call our trading robot object. There is a create portfolio method, which will uh, create a new portfolio object. And then from there, we can start accessing it a lot of different ways. So we've created a new portfolio. Let's add multiple positions to our portfolio. So we'll create a new variable. We'll call it multi-position. It will be a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary should look relatively the same. The first thing is gonna be asset type. It's gonna be called equity. Second one's gonna be quantity. So the quantity represents the amount of this particular asset that you own. In this case, we'll just say two shares. And then the next one is the purchase price. Purchase price. This is a float value and represents the dollar amount for the purchase. And then in this case, we're gonna have our next one, which will be symbol. I know Tesla's not $4, but for right now, let's just keep it that way. So there's a symbol, and then finally, there's this is optional, you don't technically need this, purchase date. So the purchase date is used, so that way if you need a way of easily identifying positions, this is a way of doing it. I did also wanna note here, this is on a per share basis, so you bought two for a purchase price of $4. Um, ideally, you could even probably write two. Um, I'd have to look at that one. Yeah, I'd really have to look at that one because I don't necessarily like that. Um, more than likely, what I would probably ask of you is you're gonna give me a list of dates and then a list of prices and a list of quantities and then we can easily fill in the rest. That's only to keep it organized. Otherwise, it could get really messy really quickly. And then I'm sure some of you are going, Alex, <laughs> my God, we have the API. Why don't you just use the positions one? I am planning to add that. So yes, I, I do recognize like for some people you own like 30, 40 positions like this ain't, this is not gonna work. So there is a plan to integrate pulling your current positions inside uh, of TD Ameritrade using the API. So don't worry, that is coming. It's not there yet, but it is coming. So just be a little bit patient on that. But for right now, you can do it manually. Or you could even do like a load CSV out here and then read it that way as well. So I'm gonna make another position. In this case, I'm gonna keep everything the same. I'm literally just gonna change the symbol. And then from here, we are going to add those positions to the portfolio. Whoa! And in this case, um, we're gonna do trading robot portfolio. So the portfolio property returns the portfolio object. And then that one's going to have the different methods. In this case, there's an add positions method. So we are going to add uh, our positions. In this case, we're gonna say, okay, take our positions argument, have that equal our multi-position uh, variable. Keep in mind the add positions argument does return a dictionary. You know, there's multiple ways to get to your positions inside your portfolio objects. So this is just one way. So if you want just the ones you recently added, this would be a nice way of doing it and then just storing the result of this method call in a variable called new positions. And so now 
if you want to print that out, do new positions. So we should see something there, something like this. Oh, look at that. Oh, we need to do the pretty print one. Pretty print. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So now you can see we have two positions in there. It did do a little bit of a cleanup. So even though we passed it in like this, it did actually reorganize it a little bit for us where the key is now the symbol. This is a nice, easy way to kind of quickly access it. Ideally, at some point, I'd like to maybe see about either making this a um, the CUS IP. I think that's which one it is, or the contract ID, depending on if it was for interactive brokers. So yeah, at some point, I, I'm probably going to change this, but I, I do like a nice, easy way of getting it, or at least getting all the symbols, because that's used heavily in other calls. Okay, so that's adding multiple positions at once. Sorry about that. Let's add a single position. So add a single position to the portfolio. So from here, we're going to say trading robot, and then we're going to do... Um, portfolio, and then add position, so single. And then we're just gonna pass through our arguments. In this case, the first argument is the symbol. In this case, I'll have it be Microsoft. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. And then the next one is quantity. Let's do 10 shares. Next one is the purchase price. We'll say uh, $10. Next one is the asset type. That is uh, equity. And then finally, there is a purchase date. This will be 2020 0401. So that adds a single position to our portfolio. Okay. And then again, just to show you a different way of kind of doing what we were doing up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say pretty print, pretty print. And I'm gonna say, okay, take my trading robots. I know I have a portfolio object inside of it. And I know that my portfolio object has a positions attribute. Again, just to kind of reiterate, this shouldn't be all too surprising. I know my portfolio object has an attribute called positions, which is simply a dictionary. And the way this dictionary is organized is your key is your symbol. And that symbol is assigned to another dictionary. And that dictionary has five different keys at this point, symbol, quantity, purchase price, purchase date, and asset type. I will let you know, um, you know, as time goes on, I'm going to add to this project, obviously, right? So here's the thing. If you're watching this video and let's just say 10 months have gone by since, um, you know, I, I've recorded it, please read the documentation because things have probably changed since then. And so there's no guarantee that this is going to be the only arguments Anytime you're working with any of my videos, especially these big type projects, um, you always want to make sure you read the documentation first just to make sure if something has changed, you're not completely lost and you're not completely blindsided like, wait, he's asking this now? Because um, it, it does confuse people sometimes when they are um, when they kind of see the video, they're like, wait, why has that changed? It's probably because I was adding something to it. Okay, so let's print it out now and let's see what our positions look like. Okay, so we now have Microsoft inside of it. So that's cool. Looks like we're doing pretty good. All right, so from here, I do want to talk about uh, a few other properties. And so this is just, again, one if you know you ever needed to use it. So we can check if the market is open, so the regular market. So check to see if the regular market is open. So we're going to say if trading robot, and then regular market open. And then from here, we're gonna say print regular market open. And we're gonna say else print regular market not open. So that looks good. Regular market is not open. So this is a nice way of using that attribute to, uh, you know, just do some validation. Like if you want the robot to run only during, you know, regular market hours, this is a great easy way of, of checking that and not having to do your calculations yourself. 
Okay, next one. Uh, uh, post market. Oh, well, we'll just say pre market open. So we'll say pre market open, pre market not open. Let's see what happens. Pre market not open. That looks good. We'll say pre market. And then finally, we'll do post market. I guess I should say after hour, but I don't know. I just wanted to be difficult. <sighs> post market. This one should return true. <laughs> Keyword should. Okay, good. So post market is open. So that's what we expected to see. All right. So this is a nice way of using those attributes if you want to grab uh, certain information and then leverage that logic inside of your script. So I, I constantly get requests with this all the time or questions. Hey, I want it to run during market hours, not market hours. This is ideally hopefully going to make your life easier, right? So you could even do other things too and say, hey, well, if this is open, but this is not open, you know, things like that. Or, you know, there's different ways you could kind of, I guess, do it is as long as this is open or this is open, then we want to trade, right? So as long as one of these is open, we're okay. But this one can't be open. So there's other operations. If, if you wanted to, you could, um, you know, do different things, right? Okay. All righty. So the final thing we're going to talk about is grabbing quotes. So grabbing, sorry, not print, uh, grab the current quotes in our portfolio. So this one's a little bit different. Um, if you remember in the previous video, this is done behind the scenes where I'm going to assume you want all the quotes for your particular portfolio. So I do grab it for everybody. At some point, more than likely, I will have a grab current quote. And so that will be one where if you want to do a specific one, you could do a specific one or a list of specific ones. So um, don't be surprised if you see another one of these, but it's gonna be something a little bit more tuned towards something specifically. So I, I don't necessarily own it yet, but I want to see it or, you know, something along that nature. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the current quote. So we'll say current quotes equals trading robot. Get current quotes. Perfect. And then we're going to print pretty print current quotes. Let's see what we got. Wonderful. Ah, uh, look at that. You get all your quotes for everything in your portfolio. So now we have a nice, easy way of getting all that information very easily. How long are we on? 13. Okay, so it's going to be a shorter video, but that's okay. All right, so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start working with... Um, what is it? The trade object. I think that's probably going to be next. We'll add a trade object and then we're going to talk about the price data frame as well. So we're going to have to add a, a method for getting historical prices. We'll take those historical prices and we'll put them in our stock frame and then we'll use our stock frame to start um, prepping data and then we'll start doing some indicator stuff. The indicators we're going to be working with are the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average as well. And so we'll just do like a very typical crossover one where we can have those indicators. If one of them is true, guess what? It will execute a trade and so on and so on. So that's that's kind of the end goal over this is we want to take a let's just say a long position if, you know, the the 50 crosses the 200 and things along that nature. So not necessarily say it's going to happen. You know, we have to find something that obviously um, that's happening with, but we'll kind of mimic and show you what that would look like and how you would write the script to do something like that. That's a very easy one. Um, I think, I don't know if I've mentioned. Where is it? This one. Yeah. I started adding more indicators. So there's the MACD now. Where else is there? 
stochastic oscillator, average true range, Bollinger bands. I think rate of change is the new one too. So I'm I'm just adding to it little by little when I get chances, but um, I am adding to it. So just keep an eye out. Um, if people want to contribute on that one, I'm all ears. I mean, by all means, <laughs> go right ahead and start adding to it. But um, they're, they're coming in just little by little. So yeah, I think that does it for this video. If you have any questions, like always, by all means, ask away. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.